Welcome to another topic of uh, political science class 11 syllabus. Today we will study elections and representation. Elections were elections in India and representation of Indians. Before we go into elections and representation, we must look at a very familiar word as students, as future citizens of the Republic of India. I believe that you are familiar with this word and that word is democracy. What does democracy mean? A democracy, if you divide the word farther into two words of which it is a combination. One is demos meaning people, the other is krasi meaning rule. So democracy means rule of the people or in other words the government that is formed, the government that is instituted among people is run according to the consent of the people, the consent of the governed. So the main ingredient of democracy is the idea of government by consent. Whose consent? The consent of the governed, meaning the people. How is consent elicited? How is consent found? How is it received? Consent is elicited through periodic elections. In some countries it is four years, in India it is five years. So consent is elicited through elections and there can be no democracy without elections. We cannot have a democratic country that does not hold periodic elections or in other words which does not renew the legitimacy of the ruling government. The government in a democracy keeps changing, the state remains same, the Indian state does not perish. It is the government that changes. The party that rules the government that may change in the coming election. So there can be no democracy without elections. But then elections are held in undemocratic countries as well, in authoritarian and totalitarian countries, totalitarian states like the former Soviet Union, present day China, Cuba, all these are one party states. So they do not have democracy, but they have farcical elections. Only one party runs for political office in those states. For example, Iraq during the time of Saddam Hussein. That was also a one party state and that also held elections. So elections can be held in states which are not democratic in nature. And what is the purpose? The purpose is to legitimize the government. In whose eyes? In the eyes of the world. Even dictators, military dictators, and now there are not many military dictators at one point of time during the 60s, 70s, 80s. Military dictators used to hold and especially in South Asia something known as a referendum in which more than 90 percent of the people supposedly voted for the military government, for the dictator. So such elections 
referendum is a type of election where in the ballot paper you mark either yes or no. So, in such a situation, the idea is to legitimize the government in the eyes of the world because the government has to have diplomatic relations with other states. It must have diplomatic recognition from other states. So, if it is not legitimate, if it is not regarded legitimate by other states, then that recognition cannot be got, cannot be had and relations cannot be conducted. So, when we talk about democracy, we talk of two types of democracy. One is direct democracy, the other is indirect democracy. Direct democracy does not exist in the world anymore and direct democracy is not possible in large nation states. Direct democracies existed in the ancient Greek city states in which citizens participate directly in the day to day running of the government, in the day to day functioning of the government. But that was possible only if the state was a small one. Direct participation of citizens in the daily affairs of the state is no more feasible because of the size of the nation states. So, what we have now is known as indirect democracy. Indirect democracy or representative democracy, where citizens elect representatives every four or five years to run the affairs of the state on their behalf. So, all modern democracies, whether they are presidential democracies like the United States or parliamentary democracies like Great Britain and India, all modern democracies are indirect or representative democracies. Now, when we say that representatives are chosen by the people, chosen by the citizens to conduct the affairs of the state on their behalf. The method of choosing the representatives is known as election. That method may differ from one country to another, but that method is always known as election. Now, the constitution of every democratic state, it lays down certain guidelines. Guidelines regarding what? Guidelines regarding elections, when they are to be held, how they are to be held. In other words, the manner in which they are to be conducted. What is the purpose? The purpose is to ensure two things. One, free and fair elections that elections should be free and fair. There should be no obstacle in the exercise of voting rights by the people and there should be no irregularities. There should not be any voting fraud. Second, and that is a more important purpose, fair representation of all sections of the population that all sections of the population should be duly represented. No one should feel left out. You have seen that of late elections were held, elections were held to elect a new Lok Sabha. For the first time in the history of India, elections were held, general elections were held in 1952 and after many years one single party got 
majority in the Lok Sabha. Earlier, and the last time that such a phenomenon happened, that a single party got a majority of its own in the Lok Sabha, was in 1984. From that time onwards, till this year, governments at the central level, at the union level, were coalition governments. But governments earlier used to be one party governments till 1989. That situation has come again. Even though we have a coalition now also, but that coalition, that government may also have been formed without a coalition. In other words, the largest party has an absolute majority in the Lok Sabha. So this phenomenon has occurred after many years. You have heard the term coalition and you have heard the term alliance. What is the difference between the two? An alliance is a combination of political parties based on either a common ideology or a common minimum program. When an alliance is voted to power, it becomes a coalition. So when an alliance becomes a ruling alliance, it becomes a coalition. It is referred to as a coalition. Otherwise, it remains an alliance. An alliance may be formed before the election. In most cases, it is before the election. Sometimes, alliances are cobbled up after the elections. So in this episode, we have learned about what democracy is, the necessity, the compulsory nature of elections in a democracy, what are the types of democracy, whether direct or indirect. The indirect democracy as a type of democracy that exists in the world today. And you have heard about, and I was pleased to tell you about, elections in India that started from 1952. And the very interesting phenomenon of a single party getting absolute majority in the Lok Sabha after 25 years. Thank you. Thank you.